Here's something else, ladies and gentlemen. Repeat after me, please. You got to be hungry. Everybody together, you got to be hungry. I'll never forget Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, yes, sir. What do you want to do with your life, young man? I said, sir, I want to be a disc jockey. He said, Mr. Brown. I said, yes, sir. He said, you got to be hungry. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, people that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry are willing to invest in themselves. People that are hungry will go to seminars and workshops. People that are hungry are always searching, always seeking higher ground. So how do you want to make it? I said, I want to be a disc jockey. He says, good. Here's what to do. He said, I want you to read 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. He said, you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. You must program yourself to success. He said, I want you to listen to Earl Nightingale and Zig Ziglar. Listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. He said, I want you to change your relationships. And I don't want you to ever lose your hunger. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, people that are hungry are unstoppable. People that are hungry are no matter what people. They make it happen no matter what. He said, I want you to listen to Paul Harvey. Who is he? He's the world's greatest communicator. Success leaves clues, young man. Always listen and follow people who are doing what it is you want to do at the level you want to do it and learn from them. I told T. Hobb when we were standing by the stage, I said, hey man, I want to work more with you. I want you to coach me. I want to learn from you. See, I found you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. Always have a thirst for learning. So I listened to Paul Harvey every day on the radio. While in school, I would go out and listen in his car. He gave me his keys. I was working to develop myself. And I continued to listen to motivational messages and he would take me to see the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale who wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I toured with him before he passed. You, you have something special. You have greatness within you. Don't allow your circumstances to determine who you are. Don't allow your negative thoughts to hold you back. You, you have something special. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Dr. Peel was an incredible man. I, I admired him when he spoke. He gave me goosebumps. I can feel him in my heart. And, and I never forget we were coming back to the school and Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, yes, sir. When Dr. Peel spoke, you didn't move. When he spoke, you were hanging on every word. When he spoke, we didn't have to tell you to sit down and be quiet. Why? I said, sir, I could, I could feel him when he talked. I felt like he was talking to me, sir. He said, he was. I said, but he doesn't know me, but he was speaking to you. Did you feel him in your heart? I said, yes, sir. He said, most people feel him in their head. If you felt him in your heart, he said, listen to him, sir. Follow him, learn from him. And I would go to seminars and workshops. Anywhere I would find where Dr. Peel was, I would be in the audience. I would drive two and three hundred miles just to hear him speak. And my dream and vision was, was to share the stage with him. I thought about it. What is your goal? What is your vision? I want you to hold it in mind. There's some power in that. Because when I became involved in speaking, i never forget, I got a call from Og Mandino who wrote the book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. He said, Les, I'm stuck in Philadelphia. I need to be in Kankakee. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale is appearing. I can't make it. I heard you're in Chicago. I said, yes, I am. Can you go and open for me? I said, yes, man. Oh, my God. Dr. Peel, I said, yes, I'd love to do it. And I went there and I came. I said, hi, I'm, I'm Les Brown. He said, you're not the band of renown? I said, no, I'm, I'm Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I'm here to speak. He said, come backstage. And his wife, Martha, was there. And she said, Papa, Les Brown is here, the speaker. And he said, Les Brown? Les Brown, shoot for the moon? Because even if you miss your land among the stars? I said, sir, that's my quote. I wrote you when I was in the 11th grade. I was a part of a special, special education class project. That's my quote. He said, I know. I end all my speeches with that quote. And Dr. Peel had a great sense of humor.
a young man was backstage and I had so many questions to ask him and my mind froze up and the young guy said, Dr. Peel, how old are you? And he was up in age. He said, Sonny, I'm, I'm 92. The young man looked at him and said, I don't know if I want to live to get 92. He said, that's because you've never been 91. <laughs> so I did the things that Mr. Washington suggested. I listened to motivational tapes on a regular basis. I would go to seminars and workshops whenever Zig Ziglar and Dr. Dennis Wakeley and Jim Rohn would come to town. And I said, sir, I said, what do you want me to do now? He said, Mr. Brown, I've given you everything that I can give you. He said, develop your mind, put your money where your mouth is, continue to learn how to be an effective communicator, because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And always surround yourself with OQP, only quality people. So I went to apply for a job on Miami Beach. WMBM radio station, Milton Butterball Smith was the program director. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. He said, young man, you have any journalism in your background? I said, oh, no, sir, I don't. You have any experience in broadcasting? I said, no, sir, but I practice all the time, sir. Let me audition for you, sir. Let me show you how good I am. All I need is a shot, sir. He says, no, we don't have any job for you. How many ever been rejected? Raise your hands, please. I was devastated. I went back and I told Mr. Washington, I said, Mr. Washington, they said no. He said, don't take it personally. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. He said, you got to be hungry. Make no your vitamin. Go back again. I said, yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. Young man, weren't you here yesterday? Yes, sir, I was. Didn't I tell you no yesterday? Yes, sir, you did. Then why are you back today? Well, sir, I didn't know whether or not somebody was laid off or somebody was fired, sir. Nobody was laid off or fired. Now, get on out of here. I came back the next day. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? Yes, sir, I was. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? Yes, sir, you did. Why are you back? Oh, sir, I didn't, I didn't know whether or not someone got sick or someone died, sir. No one got sick or died. No one was laid off a fire. Now, don't you come back here again. I came back the next day talking loud, looking happy like I was seeing him for the first time. I said, hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you? He looked at me with rage. He says, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir.